Discus are one of the most popular fish in the aquarium hobby, and with good reason. Their bright colors, laid back personality, and frisbee shape make them almost irresistible to any fish keeper. The problem is, so many people are scared of them. They've been told these fish are for the advanced fish keeper because they're so difficult to keep. Well, we decided to put a list together of things we think are important about these fish that might help you make your decision if you want to keep them or not. Here are 10 things you should know about discus. Discus originate from the Amazon River in South America. But how important is that? Not really. Let me explain. Almost all of the discus available in the hobby today are raised in farms either here in the United States, in Asia, or in Europe. They've never even seen the water from the Amazon. Why is that so important? So many new discus keepers want to make major alterations to their water to match the water in the Amazon. If the fish has been raised in a farm in Europe and is used to that water, why would you want to make the water match the Amazon? You don't. When you go to buy your discus at any retailer, ask them where they got their discus from and try to match your water parameters to that, not to the Amazon. The fish will thank you for it. If you want to know if a discus is a male or a female, just flip them upside down and look at their- Oh, behave. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. You could ask 10 different discus keepers and you'll probably get 10 different answers. There really is no foolproof way to be able to tell if a discus is a male or female just by looking at them. They look so much alike that really the only way you'll be able to tell them apart is by watching them in the most intimate of moments. Yeah, baby! Yeah. The one that lays the eggs, well, that's your female. If you're gonna keep discus, you're gonna wanna keep them in a minimum of a 75 gallon aquarium. But just like any other fish in this hobby, bigger is always better. That's what she said. <laughs> you might see videos on YouTube of two large discus in a 20 gallon tank. This is specifically for breeding. Breeders do this so that they can keep their fish 100% focused on what needs to be done, not moseying around doing their own thing. But if you're gonna keep these fish as pets, do the right thing, give them a minimum of a 75 gallon tank, but also have a plan in place to upgrade them to something bigger down the road. If you want to breed discus, there are a couple strategies. You could buy several of the same strain discus, throw them in a tank, let them grow, and then they'll pair off on their own. They pick their spawning partners, not you. The second strategy would be to buy a proven breeder pair from a breeder. This can be pretty pricey, but these are usually a full-grown adult pair that's already successfully spawned. If you want a surefire way to get babies, it's well worth the money. Once you have your pair, you'll want to do your job and provide them with the best conditions possible, with plenty of clean water, plenty of good food, and a stress-free environment, usually in a tank by themselves. If the fish are happy, you should get babies. When you go to the store to buy your discus, or if you're gonna order them online, the most common sizes that you're gonna find available are gonna be two and a half to four inches. But don't let these smaller sizes fool you. These guys get pretty big. That's what she said, that's what she said, that's what she said. A full grown discus can be up to eight inches in diameter. That's about the size of an IHOP pancake. Keep that in mind when you're making the decision of what size tank to put them in. Discus are known for being extremely docile and laid back. They just slowly work their way around the tank and generally won't bother any of the other fish. But of course, there's always exceptions. I mean, they are cichlids. There's really no need to worry about the discus harming other fish in the tank 
Really what you need to worry about is the other fish harming your discus. Unless there's breeding in the tank, then you need to watch out because your discus, they can get a little nasty. By far, the most common tank mates that you're gonna find in the hobby with discus are gonna be two of my personal favorites, Cardinal or Neon Tetras. I love these adorable little guys, and one of the best things about them is that you don't have to worry about them bothering your discus. But if Neon and Cardinal Tetras aren't your thing, it's best to look for fish that are categorized under the Community Fish label. And more importantly, you want them to be kind of a laid back temperament, similar to discus. You don't want these fish swimming around a million miles an hour all day long, stressing out your discus. As John said in the where are they from segment, discus originate from the Amazon, but the reality is most if not all of the discus you'll find in pet stores and websites are tank raised fish. This means they were bred in farms or hatcheries, so they're used to that water, not the water in the Amazon. In my experience, it's consistency that is the key to success with discus. Speak with the vendor that you're buying your discus from, find out what their water parameters are, and just get as close as you possibly can to what they already have the discus at, and then you, you'll have no problem. Discus are carnivores, which means they like to eat meat. So in the wild, these fish would swim around and look for smaller fish or insects. But obviously, you're not gonna run down to PetSmart and pick up some feeder fish for them, or go out in the backyard and pick bugs for them. Ain't nobody got time for that. Plus, it would be a real shame for your $200 discus to come down with some disease from some scummy feeder fish. Why would you do that when there's so many foods out there that are available made specifically for discus? We like to use things like cobalt for flakes, we use fluval and northfin for the pellets, and we really like the frozen blood worms from Hikari. But there are tons of options out there. Look around, it's not hard to find. Discus are one of those fish that everyone labels as difficult to keep, and you have to be an expert in order to keep them. Uh oh, it's not true. Listen, I'm not going to tell you that if you just set up your first aquarium, you should go out and get a bunch of discus. They're definitely not a beginner fish, but they're not as difficult to keep as people think. Do your job. Give them clean water, plenty of room tank mates that won't stress them out, and some good quality food, and you won't have any issues. People shouldn't say discus are hard to keep. They should say they're hard to keep if you're a lazy fish keeper. If you're willing to do the work necessary to keep your fish happy and healthy, you won't have any problems, and you'll be rewarded every day. These really are the most beautiful fish in the hobby. So there you go, 10 things you should know about discus. We are gonna be uploading a new episode of 10 Things every single Sunday. So if you found this helpful, if you found it entertaining, subscribe to see more. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week with 10 more things.